Hey, this is Dr. Cummings from PLNU, Microbiology of Infectious Diseases. In this video, I want to talk about the idea of bacterial morphology and arrangement. These are just fancy words to refer to either the shape of an individual cell, that's a morphology, or with arrangement, we're talking about how bacteria of the same population, so not different species, but the same species, how they uh, form natural groupings of multiple cells as a result of binary fission. Both of these are really helpful for identification of uh, the different microorganisms that we look at. So I want to remind you that we're talking about the bacteria in this case. So this domain here, these terms and concepts that we're going to use today don't really apply to the archaea. Archaea don't really follow the rules. Lots of weird shaped archaea. It's like squares and cubes and triangles and all kinds of funky things with the archaea. And eukaryotes are all over the map, too, depending on their function. So just keep in mind we're talking about gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria and their morphologies and arrangements. The most common morphology uh, out there is the bacillus. And the bacillus is sometimes called a rod. So imagine this three-dimensionally. looks just like this. It's got rounded ends. Um, they can be long, they can be short. Sometimes people use the term cocobacillus for a short one. That's not a very common term, though, honestly. But these bacilli, that's plural, bacilli are extremely common, which is why you can't simply look in a microscope and go, oh, look, we have E. coli, or oh, hey, it's clostridium, because the bacilli are very, very, very common, arguably the most common of all the, the morphologies that we see. So it looks like a big sausage. Next most common are the cocci, C-O-C-C-I, and those two C's sound like an X, cocci, and these are spherical. Uh, and often the word, uh, the, the, the word cocci is brought in as a suffix, so you'll have staphylococci, streptococci, etc. Um, so sometimes the genus name will give away exactly what it is. And then the third category are spirals, and then we could lump the spirals, or we could start to break down the spirals into three more specific descriptions. The vibrio, which have just a single curve. The spirilla, plural, uh, that have multiple three, four twists. And the spirochetes, or spirochetes, plural, that are corkscrew-like. And they're very long, and they have lots and lots and lots of twists to them. Together, we collectively call all these the spirals. Pleomorphic, simply, pleo, pleo is like poly, meaning multiple shapes. This is a single species where they're, for whatever reason, they're not genetically programmed to all be in the same shape. Now, there's only a couple species that do this, and we're not going to worry about that. So what I really want you to learn are the bacilli, the cocci, and the spirals. And among the spirals, make sure you can recognize vibrios, spirilla, and spirochetes. Now, the cocci and the bacilli can form arrangements, um, naturally occurring clusters, that uh, you don't see among the spirals. Spir spirals always finish a, a round of binary fission and separate from each other. The cocci and bacilli don't always do that. So on the left here, you see what cocci do. Uh, if you've got the plane of division going right down the middle, we're looking at the top here, if they're genetically programmed to not let go of each other at the end of binary fission, then they're going to exist as diplococci. And there are some species that are characteristically seen as diplococci. So, for example, Streptococcus pneumoniae generally exists as singles or diplococci. And so when we suspect that someone has a uh, pneumococcal um, pneumonia, uh, we take a sputum sample, look at it on a microscope, and if we see a predominance of diplococci, there's a good chance that we were spot on with that. Uh, in some cases, the bacteria, the, the diplococci that are hanging on to each other, will undergo another round of division and another round of division, continuing to divide without letting go, and you end up with a long chain that we call streptococci. Now, there's also a genus, streptococcus, and of course, it's named that because the species within that genus form these streptococcal chains, but they're not the only ones that form streptococcal chains, so it's a, a little bit of a, a deception there. So the genus Streptococcus does consist of streptococci, but there are streptococci in other groups as well. Clinically, if we talk about the streptococci, we're talking about species within the genus Streptococcus. 
Uh, out in nature, particularly in soil and water, we'll find tetrads, where you get two planes of division, like you see on the left here. Sarcinae, which forms a cube, three planes of, div of division, all, um, all perpendicular to each other. We don't typically see those among pathogens. We usually see single coxy, diplococci, streptococci, or what we call staphylococci, where the plane of division is random, and so you get new cells by binary fission popping out in all directions, and what you end up with is a grape-like cluster of bacteria. And again, if we say the staphylococci, we mean uh, species within the genus staphylo, that should be a C, coccus. And that would be species like Staphylococcus aureus that call, cause what we uh, often colloquially call a staph infection. So learning to recognize these patterns is very, very valuable for diagnosis. Now among the bacilli, we have some very similar options. There are single bacilli, there are diplobacilli, there are streptobacilli. Don't worry about palisades and V-shapes. Again, very uncommon, and we're trying to hit the most common things. But you notice what's missing. There's no such thing as staphylobacilli. Bacilli, the plane of division is always perpendicular to the length of the cell, and therefore, if they stay attached, it's never random. They're going to attach end to end. Uh, so we've got some species like E. coli that always complete binary fission and become single bacilli before they start the next round of binary fission. There are other species like uh, Bacillus subtilis that like to hang on and form these long chains, these streptobacilli chains, end to end. Learning to recognize these can be a, a very valuable tool uh, in microbiology. So let's summarize. There are three main morphologies of both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, the cocci, the bacilli, and the various forms of spirals. The common arrangements of cocci are singles, diplococci, streptococci, and staphylococci, and the common arrangements of bacilli are singles, diplobacilli, and streptobacilli. The one missing, there's no such thing as staphylobacilli, just because the plane of division is always perpendicular to the length of the cell. Uh, good luck with this. Study hard. I'll see you next time.